Is that better? Nice. Okay, I, I'll take it. You take it? I'll dig it. All right. You dig it? I'll Man. dig it. <laughs> You gotta uh, stop saying things at the end that assume it's not the first take. <laughs> well, I want people to know that we've only learned these songs right away. Yeah, well, before they get too crit critiquish. Given like every intro song was just learned like a minute before. Yeah, a lot of people just don't know that. Uh, I just want to stress that like this is not the final product. It never is. <laughs> yeah. They sat there for the last hour and listened to a song and. It's fun. The thing you said last, I think, will be for whatever we play. It's never going to be the final version. I know. There's, there, there is no final version. Like, me and Corey rehearsing means, like, we come up with 20 different versions of each And song. we pick. All right, we'll do <laughs> version 11. Yeah. Yeah. You guys got to watch out, though, because once you start doing shows again, people are going to call out songs you've done on here that you're going to be like, oh, I don't even remember. Let me, let me post the episode real quick. <laughs> on stage oh, yeah, we better uh, we better build up our repertoire talk, talk, talk about the song though and and um learning it transposing it to ukulele all that so i think the most difficult part was there are three guitar players in it some one guy is covering one part which is you know uh that the other guy is uh And the other guy in the background is. Yeah, it, and the way they recorded it was interesting too, because like they have three guitars in the rhythm section too. <laughs> <laughs> They're all filling in pockets of, of space, and we were trying to do the work of three guitar players on two ukuleles. Yeah, and less then... less hands and less strings. That's that was the the challenge, and so. <laughs> I was like, you know what, I'll take care of that, that main, main line. And then Kale was filling in the melody with the strumming. And then I was kind of filling in with the strumming too. It's funny because like, I didn't even like really learn the melody until we sat down to record the song. And then you're like, oh, Kale, just do this part. I was just like, oh, I should have been practicing that in there. <laughs> but then it's, it was good, a good thing because then... Yeah, it's not like it's like super hard to remember how it went. And once you, re I mean, like we've been playing long enough to, if, as long as we can remember how it sounds, we can figure out yeah. how to play it. You guys are so good about like throwing in melodies while you're doing rhythms too. That's uh, some, uh, something a seasoned player kind of gets away with. It It is. And also because like we never pursued like singing while we were playing. So we you got we've just figured out like different ways of i guess incorporating ideas into our playing yeah to make it sound like there's more all kinds of harmonies going on in that song <laughs> there is and there could be even more too I, yeah because <laughs> like you're doing mm -hmm. and then the uh intro or the riff is yeah and then you could even do like, yeah, or something like that. <laughs> that intro riff, I think you could try to teach it, and only a handful of people could pull it off. It's... Yeah, it's pretty hard. Uh... Uh... <laughs> I think that's it. So it's, uh, you're, you're playing these melodies. That's the first one. That's the second one. And you're alternating between that. That's the top melody. And the bottom one is, oh, wait. together is <laughs> there 
you go, guys. Grab your low G. You can give it yeah. a shot. Um. That pull off, hammer on, do that is probably the hardest part. That's what it is. That's the second one. First one is. You can play an open G to get that G major effect. Yeah, that's all nice. Five dollars to unlock the point two five percent. You can really hear how C and K was influenced by this kind yeah. of stuff. What do I do? <laughs> so Corey's playing the DKT Premium. Gosh, what a gorgeous piece! And these D series just sound so deep and beautiful. And Calais got a really gorgeous Conilea K1T. Or wait, is it? Oh, wait. it is not. It's oh, a... ha, 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 K O. Oh, ha, ha, ha. I didn't realize it was an Oha tenor. I thought it was a Oha. Dang, I've been. This is fun to play with. I gotta say, of course. Um, we're gonna compare these. Had brought a Bray string up the Oha series with the Kanilea fluorocarbon strings because they come stock with the Aquilas. Had them put on those so we can give a proper. So I couldn't tell what it was because it's not Aquila yeah, strings. Yeah, right. Sorry. Yeah. So I wanted to give a fair comparison between. The one series and the Oha series because there are differences. Um, there's some visual differences. Small ones, very subtle. <laughs> yeah, it's a three piece neck, it's a rosewood fingerboard and bridge. Um, the gloss finish is not the UV cured, which you know, it's still really nice. It's still a, That's uh, not it's still a polyurethane. Yeah. Oh, it's a polyurethane. Same, it's the same finish, it's not UV cured. Oh, uh, okay. I think the Kanilea finish is a touch nicer, but you know, I mean, it's like, it's still basically, it's a it's a very nice gloss finish. But, this is uh, still a Kanilea. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it would be like hanging on the wall in our store. I don't know if it's... Nobody would be able to tell <laughs> yeah, the difference. Yeah, right. Like, if you didn't know right. what the OA series really is. But no. there's also some differences inside. So this yeah. these have the 2019 Conilea bracing. The the most modern true bracing um, has what they call, like, uh, touchdown uh, bracing. Like, the tone bars are, are glued at the ends, and then they're floating in the middle so that it gives even more space for the top to vibrate but still um, gives all the structural... Wait, so you mean, like, just... Just on those ends, and this is this center part is floating on it, like right. So on the oh, so it's tone bars are, are glued at the ends, and they're floating in the middle. They actually route out the middle is actually missing from the bracing on the. Um, I don't, if you want to think oh, about it like that, this one's different. So, imagine the tone bar; it's glued at the two ends, right, and then it comes up and it's not touching the top in between those two ends. Mm. Oh. It's kind of a, a revolutionary way to give the structural stability and still give more freedom to the top to vibrate. 
it, it does add to the sound, but it's um, it's not exactly like night and day, you know? It's all just very little incremental differences. But let's see if we can hear the differences when we compare them because um, the Oha series sounds great. Yeah, I'm glad they brought it back because even the old series sounded phenomenal too. You couldn't tell, right, the first time. I couldn't tell either. Andrew's like, oh, that's the Oha series. I was like, Oh uh, Yeah, what? you handed that to me and you were like, I was like, what? guess what it is. And What's I was just like, a K1T. Uh, that's a Kani <laughs> Le. <laughs> uh, and then Andrew's like, uh, these are made in China. I was like, what? Yeah, this is crazy. They still use, they use, still use like their stash of amazing koa that they have here in the islands and send them up to an overseas factory. But these are all designed and built to their standard and their specifications that they prefer on their instruments. And although it is imported, this is still a true kanida, in, in my opinion, as far as how it feels, it looks, and how it sounds. Yeah, and a lot of um, what makes it a Kanilea too is the time and expertise they put into procuring the mm -hmm. finest koa wood. Yeah, I mean, when you really think about it, they're kind of like the first major like Hawaii manufacturer to have kind of like like everything built exactly like their main line, almost. You know, well, to Kualoha a point. Did you know? that too with their OPO line, but then it's with different. Woods. It's with different woods, yeah. Right. It's uh, even the neck feels slightly different too. Yeah, on, yeah. On the OPO, this feels exactly and looks different. like a cutty there, you know. In in that's just in my. No, opinion. no, no. You're right. Um. So, it yeah, it gives people a cutty Lea at a more affordable price. I think they succeeded in that. Yeah. But you know, I still think there's minor differences that we can check out yeah. as we go through them if but you... before we do that um cory give some attention to this fine instrument in your oh, hands it is beautiful dk series or d series tenor so as you can see it's premium koa top back and sides um i like the darker variety usually like this there's a strong uh, color dark color of grain that runs through the whole thing a lot of compression curl you can see it in the different angles same thing on the side look at the back again real quick side sound port these have the arm bevel which is nice binding of ebony on top you got binding on the bridge fretboard and faceplate mother pearl inlays Goto Stealth Tuners, some of the finest tuners out of Japan. They're very lightweight. This whole thing is very lightweight, so, you know, you can expect it to really just sing with whatever you throw at it. So. So. go through these OHA series next to their counterparts made entirely in Hawaii and uh, 
do it soprano through super tenor. Before we do that, though, there's a customer with a heart of gold that donated two fine custom instruments of his oh, for can we, can we say his name? the people of Maui. I mean, I asked him about that, and he said no need, but thank you, Ritesh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ritesh, big supporter of yeah. uh, the podcast for, for years. Yeah, thank you. Met him a bunch of times, hung out a bunch of times, super cool guy. Thank you. Thank you, Ritesh. It's awesome. And um, there's been other customers, too, that uh, sent ukes, donated ukes, that um we're going to be putting up for auction along with the concert on the 16th um but yeah i'm going to go ahead and list these after we we get them recorded but it's pretty cool too because both of these builders have yet to be featured on our podcast so this will be fun <laughs> is big uh, yeah it's got like quite like, the bark it's like just enough like volume and plunk <laughs> it does like remind me of like more of like a vintage soprano yeah entirely i think I mean, that's that's what he goes for it's meant is also made of like a similar wood combination <laughs> to this vintage unit. no yeah ken tim's for years i think since the 90s has been um making martin replicas before they were even back in the game but you know a lot of That's people cool. there's a market for that say dude. that these are even better than the vintage ones and oh. i mean you know it's it's hit and miss with the vintage market because yeah, you know it's true uh, especially with playability and all that kind of stuff yeah right? but um but yeah I, i've played one of his before too that i was impressed with like if you want that vintage martin sound without having to roll the dice mm -hmm. he's, he's a great one yeah it's cool ej henderson is a lady that's in i think north carolina va is Oh, that's Virginia. Virginia, right? Yeah. I thought when I looked her up, it said Asheville, North Carolina, but maybe she's in Virginia now. No, maybe she moved, yeah. But um, her father was a, a builder as well. I think, like, he, she went to work for him trying to pay off some law school <laughs> debts and then was like, I love this. So she just ended up becoming a... A <laughs> Lucia. That's really yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. But, um, yeah, you guys going to try to come up with a little tune on these two? Yeah. Okay. Spongebob song. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, my A string went a little bit sour to end with. Oh, fun. <laughs> old too this one it sounds vintagey um gosh i didn't get the, i mean on the listing I'll, I'll have the date but it's definitely not vintage <laughs> but, yeah but vintage it, 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 inspired it has that it has that vibe right yeah you know a while back i spent like weeks drawing out headstocks trying to figure out something that was a little bit different without being stupid it's really actually kind of hard but um i love what jane i think her name is jane did there it's almost like uh like you can s like a maybe like hindu architecture or something with that headstock it's it's really quite elegant i think it's quite beautiful very unique. Um, both of these have Adirondack or red spruce tops. And um, I like the the Tim's headstock too. It's got this kind of cute chubby look to it. <laughs> um, Corey, why don't, why don't you go first? So that's red spruce and maple. Quite striking maple. Red spruce... Maybe it's, it looks like it's stained. Maybe it's like a shellac or whatever that yeah, is, yeah, but yeah. Um, really rich color. I like it a lot. Yeah, that's Usually, like the ocean. Look at that. Yeah. Silk. The ocean is made of silk. It probably looked like this. Maybe. And you got the tortoise. Not real, of course. We're not going to butcher tortoises to get their shells. Unless they we'll just... get in front of our waves. <laughs> If it was on accident, you know, we'll, <laughs> we apologize in advance. Um, yeah, tortoise top and back. Nice uh, end graph here. Uh, 12 fret to the body. Um, string through bridge. This has a lot of elements of uh, vintage Martin tenor. One of my favorite ukuleles of all time. Sorry, I um, did a setup on that today and just restrung it, which is why it keeps going out. But those are cool out ahos. Oh, okay. It had yeah. nylons. I thought I, I don't know. I like the fluorocarbons on it, but either way, sounds good. I think it's a really big upgrade. I just remember that it was nylons, and I couldn't couldn't put my finger on what was different. Yeah, really good sustain. Um, Twelve fret to the body, which will kind of move the bridge position to a more sweeter place. Um, you got tortoise binding on the edges of the fretboard as well. Very beautiful. You got the tiny fret dots, which is uh, kind of like a signature thing. You see that. Um, well, I've seen it a bunch on um, old tenors new ones too really nice um like andrew was saying very unique headstock what was it inspired by oh i don't know <laughs> oh. but it's a nice shape yeah have you seen a headstock shape like that before no i haven't either I go to tuners again closest thing i've seen with that one was maybe like a mandolin or a banjo head mm. yeah 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 definitely banjo um but this would be a very good bluegrass ukulele or jazz if you want. slipping a little bit sorry it's a, li a little bit slippy a little
She builds guitars too. Ooh, I wanna... Yeah, I know, right? She builds ukuleles like this. Her guitars are probably badass too. I thought I was gonna have to raise the action on that, but I did a little setup and it's like two millimeters. It's like really low, but <laughs> it's nice, guitar. right? It's like butter. Yeah, and it's still this thick sounding. You can tell your wife or husband, yeah, I have a lot of custom ukuleles, but I don't have one made by a female luthier. Oh. I need some diversity in my lineup. What that? How would that play out though? Like, it's like, oh, you're playing this you made by another woman. Oh, <laughs> just, oh come oh. on! <laughs> how insecure would you have just to be? marry her? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't even, I never even met her before. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I actually don't imagine that being. <laughs> it's not a thing, right? It's she's, never gonna be a thing. She's a thousand miles away. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, frick. Yeah. Did you try it yet? I did when I was uh, tuning it up. Kind of good. All right, Clay, give us a go on that little cutie. Yeah, this thing is so, so funny. Yeah, so this is a soprano um, from Ken Timms. And um, it sounds really fun. It's, it's a lot of fun to play. It sounds good. It has that vintage look feel and sound to it um red spruce for the top mahogany for the back and sides and the neck as you can see here um rosewood bridge fingerboard looks like it's also rosewood binding top binding it's got a little uh, purfling rosette here and these are uh gear tuners they're similar to the gotel um, i remember seeing these before we had a couple of these as uh, spares before we would offer them to customers as upgrade for their friction tuners work really nice this is black nylon string so the to keep it sounding and looking even more vintage and overall a very fun ukulele
I just realized I have this um, custom Koa Martin over here. Let's give a little one too. Good. It's very close, but it's not fair because they have two different strings. Yeah. And, and, and the, the uh, top is spruce, but spruce top. I hear a, a lot. I hear more boldness. Out yeah, of there's the more meat on this one. Yeah, meatier. Like you get an earful of like tone and yeah. like, balance volume. That mid range is just punching. Yeah. So both of these, 100% of the proceeds are going to go to Maui survivors of the horrible wildfires over there. And there's uh, a couple other customers that are sending nice. It's really beautiful. Oh. I mean. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Some ASMR going on on the side here. There we go. Kind of. So I'm curious to see how much oil comes out of here. Sorry. What are those called? The uh, Fandome? Supposed to like collect oil from your Bamboo day. charcoal oil absorbing sheets. Yeah. So new to the podcast, we're going to be less oily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I love Corey's oily face. <laughs> Like, oh, let me work out before the podcast. <laughs> you look like a greasy chicken wing. <laughs> that's that's how you slide around that fretboard so well. It's a it's UV cure. <laughs> that's the, uh, what is it, Jocko's secret? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He would always the... have chicken wings before. Yeah. Instead, of, instead of eating, I just rub it all over my face. That's how my face is. <laughs> All right, all right. So let's get into these um, new OHA series, see how they stack up against the one series. K1 sounds like a little bit deeper. It's more open. There's a lot more sound, more room, more sustain. I mean, you definitely can tell the difference between the one that's made in their Kanye hit factory versus the Islander. Both sound, both sound really nice, though. They sound good. <laughs> I, I, I feel like you guys should do that Samba cover together. <laughs> really cool. Bossa Nova. What's that Coldplay song? Um, <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Viva La Vida. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> that was um, one that Clay recorded up in the shop in Haleiwa. Like, how many years ago? That's got to be, like, at 10? least over 10. Like, t 11 years, maybe? Yeah. 2012? Yeah. That was one of the first popular videos with you. 
Okay, so concerts. obvious huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean like this one this definitely has more sustain okay am i and from what i hear but i'm very curious that, to see what oh it was pretty say. punchy though <laughs> that oh it was pretty close <laughs> uh, all right tenor anything uh i i hear um like the articulation on the it's almost same way too. hawaiian made here? being a little bit more oh yeah oh, this is a little bit more airy sounding i think like there's there's like almost a little bit more compression in the yeah yeah china made one though take that one in the studio and they're so really hard to, to decide do we have like baritones next <laughs> they, they didn't they, yeah they didn't make the baritone yet oh they do yeah, I know. A right? lot of people are looking for affordable Koa baritones.
does have a little bit more meat, like meaty, of, of slightly fuller tone. It's deeper. This one has like a, it's like smoother in the higher register or the upper treble response. Where that one's like a little bit, just a little bit more brash. I don't know if it's because of the, you think because this is tusk and the other one is more towards bone? Well, it's slightly different bracing, so that's probably a big part of it. Yeah. I think the fundamental sound is it's kind of the same. same. Yeah. yeah. I don't know which one I like better. That they're <laughs> really pretty close. I, I, I thought that one has like noticeably better clarity. Yeah. Or is it because it's like a little bit more responsive, just in volume? I wonder. I don't know. It just sounds like the the higher frequency comes out like a little bit more. It sounds like it has like a little bit more sparkle, but that Oha tenor has a lot of body and it's just yeah like, sounds really good too.
definitely think if you get the Oha series, upgrading to the Kanilea strings brings out more. Yeah. I don't know. The Aquila strings to me is just kind of... It's not what I like, I guess, but... It's old news. <laughs> <laughs> So 10 this one's a little bit more smooth I think um, that one might be a little bit louder Yeah, this one I like, but just a little bit more because it's a little more open. That's that's kind of what I hear. All right, let's close out. So I guess we can say Connie Leia did a pretty awesome job with this new line. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think they nailed it. Good job. <laughs> and it's a good thing that they still kind of kept the features a little bit different because the Hawaiian made ones are, you know, it should still be considered like an upgrade. And this is like the affordable, right? I mean, yeah, that's kind of built into the whole thing. More affordable, but you get incredible value. You know, the true bracing, still get a really, really nice gloss finish. Yeah. Coal wood. Aged in their factory. Yeah. Seasoned. But sound wise, yeah. I mean, you know, it's pretty awesome. And yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a beautiful Koa instrument that sounds great under a grand, 
I don't know of other options, really. Maybe they, not a whole lot. They have cornered the market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let us know your guys' thoughts, what you heard in listening to the different models and we appreciate you guys so much and um yeah i'm gonna be jumping back into setup so it might be a little bit before i get this podcast out but i'll hop in tomorrow too yeah as long as i have a bench (laughs) gonna do our best to get your guys ukes out as soon as possible but make sure that they're set up as best as they can be and let us know however we can help any questions anything ukulele let us know and i love you guys and we'll see you soon aloha